there was some people that had not heard of LinkedIn Learning on LinkedIn before. Hey everybody, my name is Tiffany. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. If this is not your first rodeo, then welcome back to my channel. Thank you for coming back to join me. I am a software engineer and I create content for newcomers to the tech field, as well as job searching advice. And I also talk about my current life as a software engineer. So make sure to subscribe if you are not already. Thank you very much. I put out videos every week, so look for that on your subscription list and make sure to tune in every week for another dose of an episode from me. So I put out a poll on across my social media. So if you aren't following me on Twitter or Instagram, make sure to do so. And I also put out a poll on my YouTube community page. So if you are not involved on the YouTube community page, then hey, get there, because I usually put out a poll every single week on there as well. And they're sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're different. So follow me across all social media so that you can make sure that you're participating in the poll so that you can actively choose what content I put out every single week on the channel. This video, I'm going over LinkedIn Learning and I'm gonna describe to you a little bit about the platform and then I'm gonna give you my experience on the platform as well as my thoughts about the platform itself. Now, I did find it funny that when I put this poll to my connections on LinkedIn, I thought it was very f interesting that there were some people that had not heard of LinkedIn Learning on LinkedIn before. Now, I do not blame those people at all because they could be professionals who are not looking to learn. And so that is not what they're looking for. So they may not be looking for that. Um, and then B, uh, I said to myself, maybe LinkedIn Learning is not doing a good job as far as promoting it. So maybe it's just poor promotion. I don't know. Either way, I thought it was very interesting. Anyways, it doesn't matter because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you the whole rundown. You will know what LinkedIn Learning is after this and you will be able to see some clips that I um, took up on the platform as well so that you can kind of see how the layout is and then maybe see if it's something that you might be interested in looking into more. I do want to point out that LinkedIn Learning is a paid platform. However, if you have not activated your LinkedIn Premium free uh, trial, then you can go in and activate that on LinkedIn and then you will have access to LinkedIn Learning for 30 days for free. Make sure to cancel that before <laughs> you go to the next month if you are not enjoying it or don't have a use for it. But either way, there is a free trial available if you just want to try it out for yourself and you have not activated your LinkedIn Premium free trial yet. Going a, just a slight bit of a background, I was going on LinkedIn Learning because I wanted to learn um, a little bit more about coding. So I was trying to learn about coding and then I was also trying to learn about like system design. Since I am in the process of doing some interviews, sometimes I go in interviews and they're talking about things that I don't know. And so sometimes I would go on LinkedIn Learning and like see if I could find a video about it real quick so that I could refresh myself. So I will know for the next interview. So that's just a little bit about how I was using LinkedIn Learning. Each course is set up a little bit different. However, I found that for most courses, they have modules. And so modules each go into a specific topic. Sometimes the modules are two minutes long, sometimes they're eight minutes long. It just depends on the topic. Um, and I'm assuming depending on the actual course topic as well. But they try to keep the the modules fairly short, which I think is great because it keeps your attention span a little bit more better, especially when you have to do like an hour long video course over something. It kind of helps to break down the course into further modules so that you can get like bite size information. They also have course files that you can download. So you can download these and then add them to your local computer, which is nice because you can have access to those as well, which is good as you continue your learning offline maybe as well. For specifically in the coding, um, a lot 
lot of times they would have like a, a starting version of the file. Sometimes they would have a work, what they called a working copy of the file. And what that was is just something you go in and kind of play around with. And then sometimes they also had like a final version of the file. So it just kind of depends on the course, how the instructor set it up. But for the most part, expect to have at least two files. One thing I did notice specifically on the coding portion is there are quizzes after the modules. See, they would go after a group of modules. So let's say they went over like three modules and these modules are a part of a chapter. And so what that meant is then after you get done with the chapter, you then take a quiz and it would have a few questions on there, five to eight questions that you answer just to kind of keep your knowledge sharp about the topic as well. Within the actual screen, um, they have a Q&A section. So you're able to go in, ask questions to just anybody. So if you have, if you're going along in the video and you find that maybe you're having some trouble with something, you are able to reach out and say, hey, I'm having an issue with this. I found that for most of the courses um, that I was looking at, that the instructor was very receptive. So they would answer in a really good frame of time so that you weren't like hanging. Now I did see at least one that like people had asked questions and nobody answered those questions. Um, and so I was like, oh, that's unfortunate. But nonetheless, anybody can answer the question. So if you as a learner are looking at the Q and A section and you can answer the question, you are more than able to answer that question for somebody else as well. So they also have a transcript section. I thought this was kind of cool. Of course, if you have uh, some hearing in inabilities, then you're able to use the transcript section, but I thought it was pretty just nice to have as somebody who can hear, but may also want to read um, what is, is what the, the instructor is saying. And then it highlights a group of the words as the instructor is going along and talking. If you wanna like rewind it, instead of rewinding the video, you can just kind of click on a group of words and then go back to that section in the video and then very quickly, seamlessly, and then you're able to kind of rewind it that way as well, which I thought was kind of interesting. Sometimes you may not get all the information and so you might wanna to have to rewind it, go back. So I thought that was a really cool thing to be able to do. To do. Now, there's also a notebook section as well um, on the, within each uh, course videos. And so what you can do is you could take notes for a video that you are watching. I thought this was pretty neat because you are then able to like, say that they're talking about subject matter and you're like, ooh, I'd love to write this down. You can just start typing in the notes section and then it will um, keep track of the time marker in the video that you took that note in so that you can go back and refer to it. Now, I know since this is a paid platform and you know some of you may not want to continue paying for that service, you can also download those notes. So if you find yourself on this platform and you are taking notes, you can take your notes with you. So if you uh, just download the notes after you get done with the video and then you're able to store them locally on your computer and then you could refer back to them. Now, the downloaded notes do have the time stamps on them from the video as well. So if you do not have access to the video anymore, that might be kind of like not necessary to have, but it's good that they add it for you just in case that you want to go back to the video. Um, if you're paying for this and you want to go back and, and look at what was said in the video at that time that you took that note. So I thought that was a pretty cool feature to have. You can also follow the instructor on LinkedIn if you want to. So you just click a button, click to follow the instructor. You can also get certification from these courses. Now, I don't know how effective the certification is for like LinkedIn learning. I don't, I haven't heard anything lately or, um, and I haven't done a lot of research into like if the certification is even helpful to you. Um, but I imagine it's like a 
typical certification for like you know you go to like tree tree house and get a certification there or a tech degree and then you can go to like free code camp and get like certified there so i'm thinking it's something along the lines of those things except it just has like the linkedin learning uh the linkedin brand behind it i think that might be like the this the distinction um but either way i it, it's available if that's something that you're interested in I do give an overview of the course details so they'll tell you about the level of difficulty and then they tell you how long the course is and when it was released now um, in addition to um, when it was released they also tend to update these courses as I've seen so I think that's a added bonus you know as far as technology is concerned things do change so it's good to know that they do go back and update these they also show the learning objectives as well for the course so that you kind of have an idea of what you should expect to know after you have finished the course which is nice and then they talk about the skills that are covered within each video and then they also give details as far as like how many people liked the content and then how many people are actively learning it so you can kind of get an idea like i'm learning it as well as these other thousands of people as well are learning it too so that's just kind of a little, little something extra to kind of keep in mind so that way you you keep you realize that you're not learning on your own which is nice that is just a brief overview of the platform itself and then now we're going to get into was i overall satisfied with the courses that i took so i have a few points here that I'd like to just talk through really quickly and then we'll wrap up this video if you are enjoying the video so far make sure to give this video a like if you have any other questions about the platform or anything like that please drop them down below if there's anything additional that I did not show that you would like to see and perhaps another video also let me know that below as well and thank you for staying tuned so overall I was satisfied with the course I started out taking like I said a coding course and so I was overall happy with that part. And then later on, I started to search for like other things on the platform, such as like load balancing and uh, just different topics, such as like system design and things like that, just to, to have an idea of it. I do find that there is, of course, a lot of information on coding technology itself is like a big driver for people. So I assumed there would be more content on that. I felt the instructors that I had taken the courses from were were knowledgeable and they were genuinely excited about the course um i liked that they were like kind of a little bit more a beat um there were a couple that were not but i still enjoyed like listening to the course some people just aren't as like woohoo and that's fine and so i was like just whatever personality that you've given us it's great just uh just be yourself so i felt like everyone was being themselves and was very knowledgeable about the topic that they were talking about I did take a beginner's Python course. Um, one of the things I mentioned earlier was that like, some courses had like a working copy of the file and then like a final copy of the file and then some courses had a starting copy of the file. So just, uh, just to nitpick a little bit, I did take one of the courses and um, I had to create my own working copies of the file. And it's like, okay, first world problems, right? And you just copy the file, Tiffany, it's fine. But for me, I was like, oh man, I had just came off of a course where they provided me with the working copy of the file. And so to go from that to transition to a different course that did not have that already available and I had to create it, it was just an extra step. So it's not the end of the world by any means. I'm just saying sometimes you have to create your own additional files if you want to follow along with the instructor as they are going through uh, step by step within the video. So just keep that in mind. I felt the quizzes were good for the most part Quit like I did the quizzes for one course that I had taken honestly They were okay. Some of them. I was just like, oh, I don't remember this So it was kind of good to have that quiz to to go back and check my notes and things of that nature to kind of see you know did i miss something like what happened so um so i thought the quizzes were good um i'm not gonna lie i did take a different course and i skipped the quizzes completely because i was like i'm just here for the information so i think you can kind of take the own your own approach with this if you want to take the quizzes fine they're there um but if you don't then i wouldn't you know 
think too much of it. However, I'm not quite sure, like I mentioned about the certification. So if you're taking the certification, you might have to take the quizzes in order to qualify for the certification. So do keep that in mind as you are on the platform. Now, I did appreciate the short modules. I mentioned before about the modules, how them being short pieces of information. I appreciated that it was very short. I have a, a short attention span. And so <laughs> uh, when it comes to learning and like sitting for a large amount of time, I like to take breaks. So I thought it was good to have like a group of modules and let's say they had like five of them, I'm guessing, I don't remember. So let's say there were five modules and they were like three or four minutes, you know, three to four minutes each. So that's not a lot and it goes by quicker when it has like those short videos that you could lean into and like really dig into and then after the module, take a break and then come back to it. So I thought that was really good and it, it worked for my flow of learning. It helped me to stay more focused on the platform instead of wanting to like get away from the platform and go check my email or something like that. The last thing I'll, I'll talk about is the course information and I told you technology changes. So I did think it was cool. I saw this interaction while I was on uh, one of the courses and they were saying, uh, somebody had asked a, somebody had asked a question of um, like, hey, Big Sur, like if you're not familiar, Apple does updates and this new update um, from the date of this recording is Big Sur. And there has been a lot of, a lot of trials and tribulations with, <laughs> with Big Sur's update. So one of the things is the editor, the IDE that the instructor told the students to download at the beginning of the course was not interacting well with Big Sur's new update and people were running into a lot of issues. The instructor chimed in and was very receptive to answer those questions, which I thought was nice. And then he also mentioned that he would be making an updated video and to address the issues of Big Sur and this IDE. I thought that was pretty cool. And that is not the only interaction I've seen about somebody wanting to update the, the course material. So they do keep the course materials updated for you. So that is really great. You are able to use any IDE that you would like to use. I ended up using something totally different than they were using. So it was fine. I didn't have any issues. Everything worked out fine and I didn't have any problems there. So everything was pretty step by step when it came to the coding side of things and when it came to like the informational videos of like system design and things of that nature, I felt like, again, they were knowledgeable about it and I felt like I got the information that I needed and if I did not find it in that video, I was able to go to a different video and find that information. So that all that to say, there's a lot of information on the platform that you can kind of pick from and you don't have to go through each course in it's entirely. If you just want to go over a topic, you're able to do that as well, which I think is good. Now, that's what I have. Those are kind of like my thoughts on the platform and to, to just to give you an overview and also to give you my thoughts on it as well. Give this video a like if you think it was helpful and don't forget to share it with anybody that you may think may need something like this or may find something something like this interesting. Um, thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. In the meantime, take care of yourself and be kind to others. Bye.